Let's look at setting up a variable speed pump filtration schedule for a 20 foot, 21 foot round pool. So the first thing we need to know is the volume of this pool. And so just to break that down for you, that's uh, 3.14 times the radius squared, so 10 and a half times itself, uh, times four foot as the average depth, uh, times 7.5. And 7.5 is the multiplier to convert from cubed feet to gallons. Uh, so with our 21 foot round pool, four foot average depth is about 10,385 gallons for this example. Now, that makes our filtration goal 31,155 gallons. And that is three times the volume of the swimming pool. The reason why is you want to filter all of the, the water in your swimming pool. In order to do that, you can't just pump the volume of the pool one time because you're not going to achieve all of the water in the swimming pool. You're only going to achieve about 63% of all the water on the first turnover. 86% on the second turnover. And by the third turnover, you achieve approximately 95% of all of the water in the pool being filtered at least one time. And that is the goal. Everything that you fail to filter from the water will now need to be able, or will now need to be dealt with by the chemicals and the chlorine in the water. That means if you filter less, you use more chlorine. Most pool owners want to use less chlorine, less chemicals overall. The way you accomplish that is more filtration of the water to the extent that 95% of all of the water in your swimming pool gets filtered every single day. So you want to take your total volume and times it by three as the minimum amount. And that's our filtration goal for this 21 foot round swimming pool. So with a variable speed pump schedule, we are going to want to have different periods of time at higher speeds, medium speeds, and lower speeds. The exact amount of RPM and flow rate, things like this, it's going to depend on each and every swimming pool because each and every pool will be different. This one in our example has a one and a half horsepower pump two inch plumbing lines, which is, you know, might be a little bit uncommon for a smaller pool. Uh, that would represent a more efficient design for a smaller pool like this. The pump in our example is 120 volts. The total dynamic head or resistance to flow at 25 foot represents a pretty low resistance to flow, i.e. The, the pump and filter are pretty much located adjacent to the pool. They're not remotely located, that kind of thing. Some other stuff that we would need to consider here. What if there's a salt system on this pool? Well, a salt system is going to need, on average, 15 to 20 gallons per minute in order to operate. Same with a gas heater. If you had a gas heater, on average, you're going to need 20, 25 to 30 gallons per minute minimum in order to operate. Maybe a little bit more than that for some of the larger heaters. So these are going to be the things that you need to consider when you're deciding, well, exactly what RPM am I going to be operating this, this pool at? So let's break that down further. The first thing is you want to run the pool for many hours per day, lots of hours at low RPM. This is a specific advantage for variable speed pumps. It used to be that you could turn off your pump for a certain amount of hours per day, and that's how you saved money not with a variable speed pump. With a variable speed pump, you want to go a lot of hours per day at a relatively low RPM. What RPM exactly? Well, that's a dynamic question. It depends on your swimming pool specifically. However, what I'm trying to do here is achieve 20 gallons per minute because I'm assuming that there's a salt system and that the I'm going to want many hours per day where the system can still generate chlorine. So that's why I chose 20 gallons per minute minimum and on this system, that's 650 RPM. Let's take a look here and I'll show you. So this one and a half horsepower pump is operating on a two inch section line going through a 150 square foot cartridge filter up and through this two inch line and through, the, through this two inch flow meter, which we're going to be reading from this digital display over here. Right now we're at 650 RPM, as you saw. It's getting 20 gallons per minute uh, just a minute ago. Take a look back. 
it's probably right on the border 19 and a half to 20 gall gallons per minute uh, just over 80 watts as you can see here top right corner is our wattage and so what's interesting about this is that even though it's a relatively low gallons per minute and definitely a low power consumption after 20 hours well that's 24,000 gallons towards our goal of 31 that's a lot we're most of the way there already just by using this really low rpm but what if we need a couple of hours per day for the heater to run well then we need to be at a little bit higher of an rpm and normally this would be higher than this but this is a pretty small pool and as a result the mid speed that we're going to test here is only 1100 rpm and that should net us 30 gallons per minute So we're looking for 30 gallons per minute, 155 watts. Well, we've got the 30 GPM. And there's our wattage. About 155. Pretty low power consumption considering we're getting 30 gallons per minute. Now for the high RPM, on this particular pool, we really don't need to have much more than let's say an hour at 55 gallons per minute. That's enough for the skimmer and the vortexing of the pool water to help clear the, the, the surface from floating debris like leaves. And that's pretty much it. We've already achieved all of the, the filtration volume that we need essentially. So really it's going to just be one hour left and we're only gonna go at 2000 RPM because at 2000 RPM, we're already at 55 gallons per minute in the system. So we really don't need any more than that. Again, every pool is different. This is just one example of a kind of a low cost, 21 foot round pool filtration schedule. 2000 RPM. There's our 55 gallons per minute. Just over 520 watts, 530 there. and we'll get about 3,300 gallons of filtered water over an hour. So in total, we're going to achieve 32,700 gallons of filtered water over a day. Our goal was 31 and change, so we definitely achieved our goal here. So let's look at the cost of doing this. Well, we take 82 watts, times 20 hours equals 1,640 watts. 155 watts times three is 465, and 520 watts times one, 520 watts. Grand total, 2,625 watts, or 2.63 kilowatts if we round up. Now let's look at the total cost for that. 2.63 kilowatts times the national average of 13 cents per kilowatt hour, or you can substitute the, the price that you pay. If you pay a specific number that you know, you would substitute that here. And we're looking at 34 cents per day, or based on 30 days, $10.20 in order, in order to operate this pump such that you are filtering 95% of all of the water in your pool every single day with 31,000 155 gallons, actually 32,000, 32,700 gallons of water filtered every day in a pool just over 10,000 gallons. This would be a great setup, very affordable and pretty thorough in terms of having minimum flow rates for some equipment to run and achieving a total filtration value that is acceptable. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website swimmingpoolsteve.com